I remember when we were standing in line for food, food, water, uh, a woman stepped out, sat down, and died of hunger, and they found a few kind of nuts, and the seven kids got the nuts. Do you remember them? No, no, I don't remember that. But... Yeah, and uh, I used to go to the person who was the um, I would call it the manager of the house. Or? Yeah, yeah, he was the he was the head of the the apartment house. Uh, yeah, I, everything, every complaint either way has to go through him, and uh, I went to him every day. My bachi, you gonna have some bread today? And he said to me, "You gonna f be the first one." To, I let, gonna let you go before anybody. You will be the one. He died too. He died too. Because when we were in the ghetto, definitely there were seven kids with my helpline grandmother and Bujinini and Anya, and uh, there was a woman who was living by herself next to the cellar where we have to run in when there was a an raid. And it took a lot of times until they convinced, yes, you have to move up to the second floor and let all these children with a mother live next to it. Because it was a, we were always the last to get down to the cellar. We were small children, we always falling on the face, my shoe was three sizes bigger than my foot was, but I was happy. I had something on. It was very difficult. I remember, hurry, hurry, hurry. We got done. Anyway, this woman posed to give up this one apartment. And just when he decided, he made an ugly curse. And my grandmother heard that. And my grandmother said, we're not going. Staying in the old one. Stay in the first floor, no going. My mother and my aunt was very upset, but listened to grandma. We all had to be, I mean, everybody had to. She was a real, real person. And uh, next day, when we posed to move out, the following day, a bomb came down to that side of the building, um, and everybody who lived in that side, that part was wiped out. So I remember yeah. that very well. I remember when we were crying on the bed, all of us, we are hungry. We, we shared one bed, seven of us. Seven of us. Sideways. Sideways. <laughs> one turn, the rest of them turn. Yeah. And Pony was crying, so they put a piece of salt into his her mouth just to be quiet. Hungarian Nazis went to door to door. My mother took that opportunity when, when the Nazis went into one apartment, she watched that from an a extra window and took that time and very fast run into the community bathroom. And they kept garbage there too and, and hide in a garbage can. But the, fortunately, everything was depend on, on situations. Fortunately, the Nazis didn't go to the community bathroom. I remember seven of us taking a bath in one bathtub. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, was a two-bedroom apartment, and oh, seven there, there was children. seven children, and you, you know, uh, the tub, you know, the tabak, <laughs> and then Irene, and my mother, my grandmother, and her aunt, and her mother, and one. Bela Bachi, he was the oldest that was mother of Rojka, you know. So we lived in a, its apartment and sometimes we were pestered by the Hungarian Nazis. They were coming always looking for if you have any valuables and they always and try to take the woman away mm. to, to whatever reason. And they were hiding 
they were made into the bed. Uh, like <laughs> Irene and my mother, they were... And Rojica. And Rojica. They separate, but they were made into the bed, you know, with the big, big... Uh, so so they've been a Hungarian, I mean, a Nazi, a Hungarian Nazis. Because they were the looking for, for people, they wanted to take them to work. Work, yes. And then sometimes they come up and they would, uh, with the bayonet, Sometimes, pop, yeah, sometimes to poke the bed because yeah. they, they, they know what, what, what to look, where to look, you know. Yeah. And well, I remember as kids we were just, you know, I mean, we knew what was all about, but you had to be quiet. And, and there was a little boy, two years old, and he was there without any parents or grandparents and there was nobody to take care of him and I remember that my mother took him in even it was the seven of us and I remember this little boy his name was Gabika and he can hardly talk he was still in diapers and we took care of him and even that day I wonder what ever happened to him and there, there was a time when the Germans or the SS decided to, to give up this uh, Red Cross camp and they took us to the ghetto. And my mother was also, Mary Bojinini, taken away from us because they were considered a young, young woman. And my mother, my grandmother, who was half blind, was left there with seven children. So she could not take this little boy there. And she he, he left her there. I see him sitting there all by himself with his little little clothes all bundled up all by himself. And I, I even now I wonder whatever happened to him. Me too. But we could we could not take him with us. And then they took us in, they marched us through Budapest. They they wanted to go to the Danube, but uh, they shoot a lot of people with guns, so they fell into the river and died. But I believe it was still daytime, and they didn't want to do that during the daytime, so they took us into the ghetto, what was a certain part of Budapest, and there was even more people to an apartment. And they took us there, and then my mother and Bojinini also escaped from the special group they were in. They said to the Germans, they want to bring us a loaf of bread to the children, and one of them let them come through, and then they never went back. So they were able to join us and come with us to the ghetto. And when we went to the ghetto, because this Red Cross uh, camp was quite outskirts of Budapest, so it's quite a distance. And uh, when we were walking, of course, not any automobile or any... Um, marching. Ma marching. Marching. We went to the ghetto and I remember people looked out from their window and some of them are spit, some of them are seared. They're taking the juice. They're taking the Jews and all kind of arrogant, 